I've learned a lot over the four decades of health and fitness and being in the trenches with the greatest in the world. And one of those things I've learned a lot more about and how to build better muscle is nutrition and how it has changed over the decades. And that's why I have the Titan meal plan for you guys out there that are confused about nutrition. I'm going to set you straight. Get a hold of me today. The link will be in the comments down below for you guys. Everybody, get over to the Titan Meal Plan, and I'll see you in the Titan Crew, where I will fine-tune any difficulties that you're having. First off, this is so cool for me to be able to sit down with you. I wish we could, did this in person, and we will. Okay, okay. This will not be the only time that I sit and talk with you about the journey. Okay. But Tony Pearson... You are someone uh, that was relevant to me uh, when I discovered what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I got to watch you on ESPN okay, uh, back in the day, and I got to see you pose and compete, compete, peaceful warrior. I got to see you compete and, and do what you do. Um, I guess that was maybe that was 78, 79. Oh, wow. We're yeah, going we're going way back. Yeah, we're jumping way back, kid. And and I saw you, and I was that impressionable kid. Um, I call it an ignorant bliss, um, which I still have today, and I love because I saw what you were doing, and I go that that there is something I'm gonna do. Um, and and I grew up in very much a family of martial artists and football and wrestling and stuff like okay. that. And I'm like, I'm taking this to another level. I'm doing, I want to be show and go. Right. And watching you do that and win and, and compete and show your art piece to the world. I was like, this is something I have to be involved in. And so thank you from me to you on setting that little kid up that I still believe I am today. Um, to chase the journey uh, of the art piece of the physique of what we call bodybuilding to the world. But to me, it's an art piece. It's the uh, Michelangelo's of today creating something. Exactly. It's a piece of art. Well, um, I'm glad I inspired you. I mean, you know, we all have somebody that inspires us. So you know, I had Muhammad Ali. So. <laughs> so there's always somebody that you say, oh, man, I just want to be like that guy. I really appreciate that. So, Absolutely. Um, it's uh, It was cool, too, because it, I found out later through the years and decades, we'll say decades, of, of getting to know you and others that I looked at, that there was a, uh, a quote my dad said to me when I was very young. He says, to be the best, you have to, to be the greatest, you have to be the best, right, at your sport. Right. But to stay on top is character and i thought that was very interesting and as a young kid I, I i wasn't smart enough to understand what that meant but then i got to meet these guys that i grew up to and and, and their characters and i could see why they separated themselves from others mm -hmm. and there's that moment when we're in our teens and 20s that we're on stage and we and we destroy the competition but there's such a a small amount of people that are at seasoned as you are or Robbie or Zane mm -hmm. that are still doing it. And it, it's the characters of who you guys are to me is that, that that's why you're still in the creative mode. The, the, the passion is still there to create this physique. Could you in your own way, tell us how is it possible to stay committed for as long as you have? It's love. You got to love what you do. Um, and to me, it was a fight. You know, I was just trying to prove something to other people too, because the naysayer is always whispering at you. It's never going to happen. So you just as well, I just keep your mouth shut and go and do your work and see what happens on stage. You know, I lasted 20 years, you know, up there and just kind of walked away from it. But I still do it. You know, I came back a couple of times recently and competed. It's just love. You enjoy what you do. You got to love bodybuilding because if you don't, you're going to burn out. You know, you're not going to survive it. It's a hard sport. It's a lonely sport. You know, you got to sacrifice everything in life for it. So 
It's something, it's a passion that, you know, you dream about and enjoy doing. I've lost more shows than I won, but I just keep coming back because it wasn't really about always winning. It was trying to be the best. I want to be the best performer on stage too. So it's a combination of all those things. You said art, bodybuilding is art because you're sculpting yourself. Before I compete, I have a vision of what I want to look like. And that's the goal. And sometimes you get that look, you almost die for it because you're starving to death. You're training twice a day. You go 20 weeks twice a day training. Uh, you just cut it right out of your life. And, and But just to get that look, you go on stage and say, yes, I achieved what, you know, you might not win, but you did the best that you could do. So that's, yeah, it's, uh, I still love it. You know, I, I'm turning, <laughs> you know my age. I'll be mid, way 60 <laughs> coming up soon, but I still love it. I still go to the gym. I still work out. Have I lost size? Yes. I mean, because I said, why carry an extra 15, 20 pounds of muscle when I'm not back on stage? It's, you know, what about my health now? So it's more about my health, but I still enjoy going to the gym. Those are good moments. I can go in there and just put my little hood on and train like the old days. In my head, I'm still 30. And, you know, you don't, you don't age because if you start no. thinking you're old, you become old. So I just do my little squat, deadlifts, bench press, whatever I can do. You, you took it to another level. Uh, I'm going to bring it down a little bit because I want these people to understand when, when I asked you about kept it in it, you went right to the point of where you went and battled people on stage. You're not just this guy, Hey, I'm in shape. <laughs> you know, you're not Michael Hearn just in shape in the gym. You're on stage competing, throwing down with these guys. Uh, 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 again, I go back to that peaceful warrior mentality that you want, you want the tussle. You want that, uh, that second level to it and that kind of keeps that fire alive i i got a question for you for those people out there that maybe won't get on stage i try to i try to express that it's what you said it, it's that you love it and there's a there's a the statement that you said is that you need to fight and i love that because i i and we don't age because every day I walk into the gym, I'm still that 14 year old that walked into the gym and competed for the first time. I feel like that every time. And it is the fight that we like. What is, can you express what that is? Why, why do we torture ourselves? Why do we diet that hard? Why do we train that hard? And what is this fight that we're dealing with? Is that a chip on the shoulder that we should just let go? It's not a chip on the shoulder. It's just, uh, it's a passion. It just it gets in your blood. It's in your head. You live for it, you know. Uh, you just you want to be the best that you can be, and it's a lot of work because genetically I had a good structure, but I didn't have any muscle size, so I had to work ten times hard. I had no legs, I had no chest, I had no triceps, but I built it. If you look at some pictures of mine, I put everything together. I completed the full body, all body parts was matching. Every to tie in small waist, the hips, everything, but that's work. That just work, and people go, "Oh, you look so okay." But they don't understand when I go to train and work out, there's a master plan. I look that way for a reason. Every cut, every stretch, and you see, I create it. It's kind of like Frank Zane. He created this physique of his, upside down, upright rows, off the wall stuff. Uh, it's just a, a combination of things. But instinctively, you start to learn your own body. You know, I trained with Robert Robinson for a long time as well. He taught me so much. And I'm training back in St. Louis, George Turner, thanks for him. Rest in peace. He taught me a lot. But then I worked on myself. I, I got rid of the training partners. I didn't train the pros anymore. I moved to Atlanta and I trained by myself, with Superman Blunt down there. And I we just kind of mastered myself. When I went back to LA, I said, oh man, you changed a lot. Yeah, we're doing squats, training twice a day like crazy people. You know, it's, it was fun to me. It wasn't like work. I didn't feel like, oh God, I gotta go to the gym today. I can't wait to get to the gym. I'm like kicking the door in, let's go, let's go, let's go. And soon she put the weight down. I got to pick the weight up because I got to keep moving. Yes. So that's, it was fun. We would train like crazy people and then go eat as much as we can. We'll go fall asleep. And the train eats. <laughs> so full-time bodybuilder is yes. what we called train over eats. here. <laughs> so <laughs> it was never a job. It was never painful. It was never like, oh God, I want to do it. That Was I injured sometime? Yeah, my knee still hurts. Had a whole career on a bum knee. So, but it didn't stop me. I still squatted 400 pounds, you know, lunge and leg press and 1,000 pounds. You just continue to do it. Um, at the end, yes, I feel a little bit beat up because you pay a price for it, you know, all athletes do. And uh, of course, the diet takes a lot out of you. 
You got to be disciplined with the diet because that's key. If you are confused about training, do not worry. That's what the Titan training plan is for. For you guys to subscribe to this plan, you also get the additional coaching from me in the Titan private group. Get in there today and I cannot wait to start working with you and making your dreams come true. Let's get back to the show. You're learning something that I speak about, and I love that it's somebody else saying this, is that it's not work. We love it. And I can feel the passion, and I always have with you. It, it didn't matter um, training once or twice a day. You get to do it. You don't have to do it. You get to do it, and you appreciate that. Yeah. And like you said, you're still a kid, and we're not spring chickens no more, but we are – spiritually we were still those those kids that love to go in there and just destroy the weights yeah. and, and do that and i think it's so cool that you said that even at your age and and we are seasoned i get it but we're still in the fight and we still love it and, and it wasn't the motivation it was the passion and love and you took it to a whole nother level too you didn't just there wasn't just one aspect for you 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 when you're on stage, you have this piece of art that, you know, you created this Michelangelo piece, David sculpture, but then you showed it in another way that so few ever did. You know, you, some guys went, yeah, uh, 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 but you're up here and you're flowing and, and entertaining the audience. And I, I just remember, I think it was you guest posed up at uh, in Washington State when I was still a pup. And I was watching you and I was just like, uh, wow, this is, he has the physique, but he has this way of showing the physique that just made it another depth to who you are. What, what goes through getting ready to get on stage and show that performance? Well, posing is an art and you are the piece of art. So you got to, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of rehearsal time getting those poses together transitioning from one. Once again, I had some really good coaches to teach me how to pose. I'm a, I, I learned very quickly. You show me once, I got it. So you transition from one pose. I was the worst poser ever because the first time I hit a pose for George Turner, he said, my grandmother can pose better than that. <laughs> so, so I come a long way, but I spent a lot of time working on my poses because I realized I'm not the biggest guy on stage. So I got to show something unique and different. I got to draw some attention to myself. So the back poses, the vacuum pose, the crush, the lat spray, and all these crazy things, it's just something you create. You create yourself. You, 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 you redo yourself. I stole a little bit from Zane. I stole a little bit from Robbie. I take a little bit and then try to make it my own. Does that make any sense? Oh, yeah. You, you, you're, you're a performer. When you come on stage, you're not verbally talking to people, but your face expression, your movement, your transition is talking to people. And the louder they get, the more intense you get on your posing. It's like you give them what they want. Yeah, I, I, I think you said it there. It's like you are performing and you aren't speaking with words. And, and um, that's the coolest thing, I think, is when you're doing that. And when I can see, when I watch individuals, I can I could see them speaking even when they're lifting. I'm like, oh, I know what he's thinking. I know where they're going with this set. I know what's going on in the mind. And it's the same as like when you're on stage and you're posing. It's cool to see somebody speak so loudly. Right. Without using voice. You don't need words. <laughs> and in today's, today's world, everybody uses their voice and 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 says, you know, it's it's everything everybody has their opinion everybody has their thing and I, I i go back to the people that are that old school mentality of get the work in like you said it's not easy no and it's not easier it was much easier for you in your 20s than it is now oh god yes but you're still doing the work right i still figure out how to do stuff i have a lot of history behind me and i know how it's done some exercises i can't do anymore but i still do enough to maintain and I mean, I know what I'm doing because I know how to You're not isolate. maintaining. Let's let's throw that out the window. You're not maintaining. You're, you're yeah, you're 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 minimizing the decline. Yeah. And, and, and you're one of the greatest to ever do this for the period that you've been doing this. It's not like I mean, you've been here for a long time and you're still up here at the top. 
and 50 years. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it wasn't because you saw some meme on Instagram back in the fifties and sixties. Like I did It's like, Oh, that's why I'm, I'm pushing it. Cause I heard somebody speak once and that just fired me up to go. It doesn't work that way. There was something that lit in you early yeah. as a teenager and you were, you were done. You were like, this is the journey. You can't let go. You're, you're hooked. And I said something earlier, and I and I think that everybody has a chip when they're young, the naysayers and all this stuff. And I like my chip that I used it in the right way, and I didn't let it destroy me. I, I let it build me. Is there anything that you happened as a youngster that that you used in the positive way instead of it going, could you have gone one way instead of the way that you went? No, because when you always tell me what I can't do, that's when I'm going to show you that I can do. And I'm not going to go anywhere. You know, I always felt that they kind of wanted me to just go away because this guy just go away. <laughs> but I refused to go away. So they placed me really low. And I said, keep coming back, <laughs> smile on my face, still do my show. I was performing. And it was a job as well. You know, you get exhibitions and seminars. So that kept you moving forward. But uh, I just kept doing it. The, the negative energy just gave me more energy. That's all it did. That, I thankfully inspire me. That's what I would say. Okay, I go back to the gym. I just lost a show. Now I got to wait another year to try to win that show. And that's when you just train even harder. Just take it to the next level. Put your mouth shut. Don't don't complain. Don't be a complaining and crying about it. Just do the work. Come back bigger and better. That's all you can do. Where'd that come from? Well, you know, that comes from my childhood. You know, it's, I don't know if you know anything about my childhood. I, I, I want the world to know. I would like you to explain this to us. Okay. Uh, when I was, my dad gave me away and I was living with my great auntie and she, I hate to tell you this on live on TV, but I was, I was tortured from three years old. I was almost burned alive in a stove. And so never had a childhood and I was secluded away. I, I never had friends. I was isolated. And something inside of me just was fighting to live because kids, you know, you want to die because there's no escape from this crazy woman. You know, I was I was in the cotton field. I was picking cotton when I was six, seven, eight years old for like 10 years of that. And it just hardens you. It toughens you. And you know what hard work means and, and the threat of being tortured every day. So I just kind of use that energy. And I think God was working through me because I yelled out to him one day at 10 years old, God, why do I have to live through this? You know, you don't pick your parents. You, it's who, whoever you, <laughs> who raises you. And I was unfortunate to have my great auntie, was my dad, which my dad gave me away. So no one knows this story. I don't know if I could talk about this. Could I talk about this? This is, this is what's important, I think. Okay, so my dad gave me away because he didn't want me. My mom ran away because he was going to, I just say, he was going to kill her. She was very convinced of that. So, like I said, I was stuck with this great auntie, and the, the 12 years of my life, the first 10, 12 years of my life, it was torture, it was hell. But somehow that instilled in me hard work, determination, do just do the work. And she always said, you take nothing from no one, you ask for nothing, you just do the work. So I thought when I got to California, if I just did the work and I look better, I'm going to win. So that was my mindset at that point, too. It was tough. I wrote, I wrote, my, I wrote a book, my memoir, uh, Driven. So here's a copy of the book, Driven. That's, that's the little three-year-old kid on the cover. <laughs> so it's about my life growing up down south and um, survival, I'm, you know, just trying to survive. They can also watch that was turned into something with Generation Iron. Is that correct? Yes. It's a documentary driven the Tony Pearson story. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Apple TV. You can get it on Voodoo. It's, it's everywhere. We'll uh, put the links up there again for you guys because this is, this is really uh, one of those things I think everybody should see because uh, all they see and, you know, is this incredibly – Good looking, charming man uh, with an incredible physique. So incredible. It's, it's, it's the pinnacle of what we try to uh, achieve in bodybuilding. And they don't know the backstory and they don't know the hardship. And, and I think really it's, it's that hardship that you had as a youngster is, is 
set you up f because you used it in, in, in a good way for you. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people would turn that in a negative way because they're angry. Uh, they feel the world's turned against them. They, they're not going to survive. So they end up taking drugs and going to jail or dead. And, you know, bodybuilding saved my life. I have to tell you this because if it doubt bodybuilding, I didn't have anything to fall back on. I didn't have anywhere to go. And I fell in love with the sport. You know, there's a lot of kids who are in trouble today. You know, with suicide, it's the highest it's ever been. Uh, kids are, you know, taking drugs and they're looking for help. They're looking for help. Somebody to help and no one's listening to the kids. So I'm advocating for kids that it's okay. You can tell somebody. I was afraid to tell somebody this story. For 40 years, I kept it inside. I was embarrassed. I was afraid. I was ashamed. But like I said, you can't choose your parents. It's, it's, it is what it is. And you got to make the best of it. So I never became angry. I never said, oh, no, the world did this to me and I did this. No, I just said, okay, I'm going to use this energy. And I, when I trained, I was training. I love training with Robbie Robinson because he tried to destroy you. But I would smile at him. So you never going to say, no, Robbie. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. And he, he said I was a pretty good training partner because I just relentless. I never said no. I never said I can't. I said I will. I can't wait. To, you know, Give me the next set. So I'm just trying to advocate for kids that it's okay to tell somebody. Speak up because no one's listening to the kids today. They're dying of suicide. Uh, they're taking drugs, and so you know it's 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 tough out there. It's tough out there. And I just want kids to know that it's okay. Tell somebody. And another thing they should know is to find a passion in their life. If you have a passion in your life, it's gonna you're gonna stay focused on that. If you really love it, you're gonna stay focused. I don't know if it's dancing, track and field, boxing, wrestling, whatever it might be. That's your passion. That's what you live for day by day. And like I said, that saved me. That brought me to California. That, you know, got me on the world stage. And, and of course, I have discovered that, you know, the great Arnold. But it was just, uh, and it was a dream. You got a dream. I tell kids, you have to dream about what you want in life. You can't, don't be a follower. You know, be yourself. Think for yourself. Get outside the box. And it, 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 I know people who dance and they're very talented in a lot of areas, but they don't pursue it. They feel, well, I, I'm going to fail. So so what? You fall down, you get up. Just keep going. And like I said, I lost more shows than I ever won. But I kept coming back. And then the last time that I took off, I retired in 94. 18 years later, I came back. Yes, you did. <laughs> and they go, how can this guy come back? You know, I had, I, was, I was went to Germany. And I was like 20 pounds overweight. I hated bodybuilding. I really did. I was... was Upset what year was it. this? What, what year was this when you, you put on a little bit of weight? You kind 19, of pulled 1984, back. 1984, I, I, I retired after okay. 20 years. And 18 years later, I came back. But what I didn't do in those 18 years, I never missed a workout. So that sustained my muscles. Because if you lay off in a certain age, you, you're not going to get the size back. But I did. In fact, in Europe, they said, I look, the arms and legs were bigger than before. So I improved in 18 years. So I had all this fat on me. And I'm going, I don't know what I'm going to look like once I get the fat off. I hope that the structure is here. That I hope the waistline is still small. And it was. But once again, I was training for 18 years because I loved what I was doing. I trained. I missed my workout. I had training partners. I just didn't compete anymore. So that got me back on stage. And um, I did a bit of a tour over there. And it was fun. I was back home again. It's like coming home. But when I retired, I was very bitter because of the situation with the IVB. If you read my book, you'll see what I said about it. But it's true. I didn't lie. I don't create stories. I tell truth. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. But it's a situation that I, mean, I refused to go away. So I had, an, I had an option. I could have walked away. So don't forget about this. You know what? It was something that I loved. It's like living. That was my life. That was my life. 